man, oh man, oh man. Shed's here. everything I had in incubation is already out here. Market supplies, coolers, official company foraging mobile. You think I'm kidding? I'm not. This is where the fruiting chamber is going to go. I just got back from the home improvement store and uh, put together this little frame. We're going to sheath it in uh, three millimeter plastic. Six millimeter is much better. It's a lot more expensive and I just so happen to have some three millimeter on hand. So we're going to use that for now. And then, uh, if you guys have seen my previous videos, you've seen that I'm just fruiting a little cheap Amazon greenhouse. It's like five foot by five foot, something like that. But anywho, uh, that's going to go in here and we're going to hook up all the ventilation and the uh, humidifier today, all that good stuff, hopefully. Uh, God, I do not envy somebody who has to move all this stuff and uh, I don't even have a wagon here right now or a truck, so I had to carry all these four at a time out here. That, Took a whole evening. Uh, if you want to learn more about how to make fruiting blocks, it's probably going to be coming up pretty soon. I've already done a couple of videos on how to, uh, you know, just kind of introductory things on how to cultivate your own mushrooms. Uh, but I will be doing substrates next. Uh, it's been a couple of months since I started that series, and then I kind of dropped the ball on that. Uh, but as you guys can tell, I've been a little bit busy, so uh, I'll get back on that as soon as possible. But we're going to go ahead and get this fruiting chamber put in here and get it hooked up and. Uh, Get the ball rolling. All right, so now we need to get this stapled around the edge of that frame there. Uh, this is going to provide a moisture barrier for the floor, uh, and then. The tent will have negative pressure, so it's going to kind of suck up, and then just the weight of the tent being on it is going to secure it to the floor. I didn't use plywood underneath it just because I don't have one. Didn't really feel like going out to grab one. Uh, so it's just a basically a floating frame with uh, uh, just plastic on the bottom. And so the humidifier is going to go right about here. Once I move that over, it might go in the front. Uh, exhaust fan is going to go on that side with the exhaust line going out the, uh, the window there. And all the windows that I've vented out since I started growing mushrooms were two foot. So I'm not going to be able to get away with using this little brace uh, for my dryer vent. I'm going to have to kind of finagle something. I think I'm going to cut some strips and just raise this two by four up a little bit. Cut out this dryer vent out of this window. And more or less keep it sealed, insulated, and all that good stuff. This is the same old one I've been using for years. We're going to freshen that up before we put it in. Uh, this is covered in spores and dirt from the chickens uh, dust bathing and so on so I'm gonna clean it up some bleach on it and this is about four inches tall it's a four inch dryer vent it's actually more like five by the time it sits in there with this frame and I just nestled that kind of right in the windowsill all right yeah okay scratch that that didn't work um, <laughs> I just went and got a two by six or, I'm sorry a one by six and uh, fits right down in there in the windowsill and cut it to length. I'll drop this window down to here, tape it up, insulate it, and all that good stuff, and then we'll be able to hook our exhaust line over here. All right, so I'm about to get this all taped up and everything. Uh, got that put in place. I'm getting ready to put the fan in. I've been using this fan for quite some time. It's been a really good fan. I've had it for like two years. Uh, 
It's 190 PFM feet per minute. And uh, my tent is about 200, so uh, it'll exchange the air when powered on high, about once per minute. Uh, which is a good thing because I also incubate in the same room. This is not exactly what you want to do under the best of circumstances because uh, the incubating bags are going to be consuming oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide, which is the same thing that we're trying to uh, expel out of the tent. So uh, to do all that in the same room requires a little bit of extra fresh air intake. But I just wanted to show you that uh, this is why we vent outside. Those are spores. They're microscopic. That's a lot of spores, and that's a very small portion of what just came out of that fan. But especially if you're going to do this inside of your house, you need negative pressure in your tent, uh, and you absolutely must have been outside, especially if you're growing oysters or any sort of chlorophyll variety. Uh, I'll touch on this a little bit more as we move along. Well, the greenhouse is in. I'm gonna put some more fluorescent lights up top. But it's almost three in the morning. I think I'm gonna get some sleep. All right, tried to spare you guys some of the more boring parts, but we're all hooked up, ready to go. Kind of explain how this works a little bit. This is a humidifier. Um, it's got a five disc ultrasonic uh, mist maker on the inside. Uh, and then it's got a fan that blows down and will push air into it. Now we've got air that's coming out of the exhaust, so it's gonna be pulling that uh, humidified air in on its own, but I like to give it a little bit of a force draft as well. Uh, all the lights are hooked up. I use fluorescent lighting up top and then the LEDs on the bottom there. Uh, and what you see in the background there, we'll walk over here. Now this behind me is called an ink bird controller. These are pretty standard in the industry. Uh, a lot of folks use them. Uh, the way that this works is it's got a sensor which is inside of the tent uh, and that reads the humidity and so the top number is the humidity that we're reading currently in the tent, and the bottom number is the set point. And then it's also got a bunch of other settings that you can do. Uh, you can set custom differentials and, and all that good stuff. Uh, you can really customize it to uh, do exactly what you need it to do. Really awesome piece of equipment, uh, and they're not very expensive either. Definitely recommend one of these. Uh, but this goes to that mist maker that's uh, in the tote over there. So. Once this humidity drops, I've got my differential set at 5%, so once it uh, drops to 74%, the tent cuts it on until it comes back up to 79, and then it will cut that humidifier off uh, until it reaches back down to 74 again. So that means that our fruiting chamber is going to stay at a constant humidity level of about 75 to 79. Uh, now you might be thinking, isn't that a little bit low? Yes, it is, actually, uh, according to uh, pretty much all the literature on mushroom cultivation. Most of them are claiming that you need levels of 95% relative humidity and all sorts of other stuff. And honestly, in my opinion, or I'm sorry, my experience rather, uh, it simply isn't true. Uh, you can fruit mushrooms and they'll be just fine, especially oysters at like 70, 75. So, uh, and then also the reason why I don't do that uh, as well is because I don't have a drain in the floor. I might cut one at some point or another, uh, but I've also noticed that when I'm growing things like lion's mane, if I've got too much humidity going on, sometimes it can cause the tops to kind of start rotting and all sorts of other funky stuff. I have found in my experience that right around 75, 
80% relative humidity is, it's just fine. And like I said earlier, now remember this is very important, keep your fan on the exhaust side. Now if we had it on the intake side, which uh, I've got this little carbon filter up over here. The only reason why I use it is it just it came with the inline fan and it seems to take a little stress off of the temp, but I'm not trying to filter anything with that filter there. Uh, it's more of a fixed look. Uh, and it takes a little stress off the temp, but that's really it. Uh, now imagine that you had a balloon and you're blowing into it. And this is my analogy of our fan on the, on the intake side over here. Now imagine that balloon has zippers and all sorts of cracks and crevices and stuff like that where humidity and spores and everything can fly out in all directions. Well that's the same thing that's going to happen with your tent if you put your fan on your intake side. You need to put it on the exhaust side so that it sucks in, almost implodes a little bit, uh, and that's going to prevent any of those spores or anything, but which you need to keep spores out of your living space if that's what you're doing, uh, growing inside your house. They're not good to breathe in. They can cause a lot of health problems. Uh, there's quite a bit of, of evidence for that. So just be safe and uh, exhaust side. Exhaust fan on the exhaust side. Remember that's very easy. All right, folks, that is it. We are finished. I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy loaded up. Took most of a weekend, but we got there. Got some very impatient shiitake blocks that are demanding to be let out. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next week. I'll be sure to let you guys know how this is coming along. Take care.